got that nice and sealed in there. <laughs> so there is no doubt this is one of my favorite type of systems to install for waterproofing for a tub surround. It really is that easy. I know that was just like a two minute demonstration of installing this, but it really is uh, stream really streamlined, very quick and efficient. And if you have a window in your shower, this is definitely going to help you out and make it really simple to be able to make sure everything's 100% waterproof. Because after all, the tile is just the decorative part of the bathroom. If you had an old bathroom with you know the regular four by four tiles that are falling off the wall and there's mildew and mold behind it, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, that they basically there's a lot of times the older generation would just put it straight over plaster and then you have all of these issues. So waterproofing your showers is definitely highly important and this is one of the easiest systems to install. And tonight that's what this whole live stream is going to be about. It's uh, not only for uh, you know to be able to show you how to do this but also to interact with you as well and show you some of the uh, you know the kind of the features of what I'm building on this platform to be able to help you. Uh, so first off Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, this is 100,000 followers here on YouTube. Uh, on Facebook, I got almost 250,000. So thank you for all the support, but I was really, really happy that we got up to 100,000 here on YouTube. I really appreciate all the subscribers, everyone, Facebook, all the platforms that have been really supporting me. I really appreciate it. It keeps me motivated to continue to bring out more videos because I'm constantly editing. I'm constantly adding things. I'm trying to get better at everything I do to explain things. And I'm hoping I'm going to be a hub for you to come to when you're actually planning on doing your own bathroom remodel, because, you know, hopefully I'll be the best way to be able to communicate how to do this. So again, thanks so much for YouTube, hundred thousand subscribers. I'm really blown away. It's really awesome to see. I mean, I'm not sure anymore if hundred thousand is a real big deal on YouTube, but uh, it is to me and I really appreciate everyone. Uh, so let's get into tonight's things. We've got a lot to get through. So we're going to be going over uh, my course. I, I outlined this in a course. So if you guys don't know my entire platform, I basically have every single bathroom I do, I basically create a course and then it outlines the entire step-by-step -step process of through that the entire project. So right now I have seven complete courses that is available uh, the basement bathroom project is the one I just finished and I'm now currently working on this tub shower replacement. And that's all I'm going to be doing in this particular bathroom is a tub shower replacement. 
Uh, but we're gonna outline it in my course here and just know that I do have all these different courses. I have the ultimate tiled shower, curbless shower course. So if you're doing a master bathroom on a second floor and you wanna do a curbless entry, maybe you're taking out your existing tub and putting in a, in a curbless shower, this is the, definitely gonna be a lot of uh, great tutorials here that are gonna help you understand how to go about doing it, maybe in what kind of projects, um, types of materials and things that are best to make it easy for you to be able to do that. I also have converting a tub to a walk-in shower. Uh, we actually just use a regular acrylic base and so I can step you through that entire process. And the one big thing about this uh, converting tub to shower course right here is that it it's an old, old 1950s, maybe yeah, 50s bathroom with the old mud bed walls that were about an inch and a half thick. So it was a lot of demo to be able to do that one. But anyways, check out my courses, but we're gonna get into this hydro block. This is a system that when I went down the coverings uh, the, earlier this year, uh, they were one of the, the big guys that were at the, the show and showing some of their products. And this particular board, I was really drawn to because I used to use this type of board all of the time. It's a cementitious board. It's foam. It's easy to, to cut. There's no dust. And the great thing about it, it's waterproof all the way through. So I'm really excited uh, to share with you the process of installing this. Uh, and there's, you know, obviously there's a lot of different foam backer boards out there, but once you use one, you're never going to go back. You're never going to really want to use any hardy backer or make any dust with uh, cement boards. So, hey, on the way in here, I meant to ask you, please give me a like on the video. Helps out the algorithm, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. And I'll try to get some of your answers if they're pointed towards waterproofing uh, towards the end of the program or after each session of this. So as you can see, let me move myself here. I basically have a curriculum here. And um, so when you, when you look at this, I have, uh, this is the waterproofing section, uh, previous lesson. So this, to give you a little bit of background of this bathroom, let me see if I can go back to my, um, so I have right now, I just have the demo process, installing the new jacuzzi tub, uh, putting a new window in that tub surround. So we did replace that window. That is a really good time to go ahead and replace your window is when you get into this much of a demolition. It's just easier and really by the time you seal everything to this window, you're never really gonna wanna be able to replace it later on. You'll probably never really get it watertight doing it later on. So if you have a, a window in your shower, you're gonna wanna replace it at the time that you're doing this tub surround so that you can make everything 100% sealed. So I show you about how to go about measuring and ordering a window. And then uh, a lot of the framing in this one was a little bit complicated um, because it was existing walls. So let me just show you here. I have, so I actually have my camera set up here inside the space. Let me move myself out of the way here a little bit. So this is the space upstairs. Yeah, this remote works good. So I got the uh, jacuzzi tub in. And as you can see here on, the, on each side of the wall, I have existing wall material. That's kind of like a fake crappy tile um, particle board stuff. I'm not real thrilled about it, but uh, really our job was just to replace the shower. And you know, there's a lot of people that's all they can really afford these days is just to do the shower. So I totally get it. Just know that if, if you're wanting to replace this later on, like that, that particle board stuff, um, you know, you really need to decide what your really your end game is. Trying to replace that later on after you get the tile in can be kind of painful. So, you know, if you if your dream is to really have a full bathroom uh, completely remodeled, then I would say try to save up and do it then. But I understand that there's some emergencies and that's what happened in this bathroom. This bathroom, actually I installed the tub and I already had done all the tile four years ago and I ended up having a real problem with the drain uh, of the uh, existing tub. So when I put this new basement bathroom down, which I'm actually in the basement right now, uh, when I was connect, reconnecting the, the plumbing to it, I ended up cracking the tub flange on that cheap crappy tub that I had. So I had to replace the tub. And then once I tried to start replacing the tub, it ended up turning into me removing all the tile and just starting all over again. So, you know, it, uh, you know, I guess it happens for a reason. I was able to now be able to give you uh, a tutorial on how to go about waterproofing around the window as well. But what I wanted to mention was just that having existing walls makes this a bit more complicated especially when you're working with plaster, uh, because a lot of times the, 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 the full opening of from rough in framing to rough in framing is about an inch, if not even more 
than what the size tub is. You know, your tub is usually just 60 inches. And so you have about an inch and a half that you're trying to fill in. And uh, there has to be some trickery of the framing to be able to do that properly. So that is really going to be important. So if you have a bathroom that has plaster and you're trying to just do the tub surround, highly encourage you to get into this course. It's going to highlight some of these really problematic areas that is going to make it easy for you to figure out how about going about doing it. So, all right, so getting into the waterproofing, I've got to go back to, I don't know why. I have to go back to my, okay, there we go. All right, um, so the waterproofing section goes into step-by-step -step for this whole process. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is my preferred method. So we're gonna watch a video on uh, why this is the preferred method that I like. And then we're gonna discuss more about uh, the project and how to go about doing this. So I have a video lined up here. You have to forgive me, I, I had this all set up, but, uh, for some reason, it freezes on me when I have it sitting down on my other ledger. So I'm gonna have to resize each one of these videos. We've got five or six videos that we're gonna go through. They're all like three to five minutes. And uh, it's just gonna help really open up the discussion about this. So let's go ahead and watch this first uh, four and a half minute video. And uh, we're gonna uh, then get into the meat of the, the conversation of how to go about doing this. So what is your favorite waterproofing system like what do you go to i mean really it comes down to efficiency speed the time that it takes to do it i'm all about quantity of jobs um you know there is something to be said about um what, what is like the best waterproofing and really i mean when it comes to these foam boards it kind of puts both of them into the same thing i mean <laughs> you know the easiness of cutting this the sealant application makes this very simple and kind of foolproof and then the waterproofing ability is kind of superior to a lot of other things. You know, you're not going to get any mold issues with foam board. You're not going to get any rot. Um, and it's this particular board, the hydro block board, it's actually waterproof all the way through. So even if I nicked it or I say if I had all my towel work up and I have a joint that I don't like, I could scribe cut with my grinder. And as long as I don't go all the way through the entire board, I don't really have anything to worry about. So you can nick this. And just as long as you don't go all the way through the board, obviously that's gonna create a, a, a leak. You don't have to worry about it. So this is really makes it a lot superior than a lot of other boards out there and a lot of other methods. But if you were to ask me, the sealant application and the foam boards are just my go-to. Um, you know, if I was trying to really try to do as many showers as I wanted to, that I would just stock my garage full of this stuff and then just get to work. Because this whole tub surround probably take me about an hour to install and then I could get into tiling the same day if I wanted to. How much is it? This stuff, um, it really, obviously it always depends on where you live and you know, online retailers are always gonna be the most expensive shipping. It can be tough, but I called around. It's really, really reasonable. It's about 31 bucks a sheet for contractor pricing. I mean, that's, you know, you have to take that with a grain of salt. It's 2023, things could be changing by the end of the year. Um, but that's pretty competitive. Actually, it's really competitive to a lot of the other big brands out there. So, um, you know, like I said, I'd probably buy a whole pallet of this and put it in my garage and I'd be just be able to really quickly and efficiently do tub surrounds like this. And how do you cut it? Cutting it? It's just as simple as it can be. There's no dust. That's one thing about uh, foam boards. I don't have to inhale any of that really toxic stuff. I just love how on the tags of a lot of these uh, products, they say it causes cancer in California, as if it doesn't cause cancer everywhere else. Uh, but I know that the concrete dust and, and uh, silica dust and, and the dust that comes off a hardy backer is absolutely no good for you. You know, I've definitely inhaled way too much of that stuff. So this stuff, I mean, it's literally just a score of a knife, just like drywall and you're done. I mean, and the other great thing is if I needed to scribe cut something, I could just kind of cut it and then be able to get it into it. You can't do that with cement board, hardy backer, forget it. Um, you know, that's really one of the main reasons I had always had a dusty issue with uh, Hardy Backer was if I was putting my board up and I it was sitting outside a little bit, I needed to, you know, scribe cut my board and I'd be using a grinder and then the dust would be everywhere. So the foam board, super simple, easy to cut and be able to get into place. Plus, if you're on a second story, maybe even the third floor, you could carry an entire box, bring it all the way up there and you're done. So it, there's a lot of reasons 
Um, the foam pour is just superior than a lot of the other types of backer boards. Clients' homes, this is ideal, isn't it? To not create Yeah, dust. not to create the dust. And I'll, I'll admit that I, um, you know, I'm trying to avoid the amount of times I have to go down the steps and go out to the out to the wet saw or whatever it is. So I'm definitely guilty of creating dust and I've tried to implement things like dustless, or not dustless, but uh, shop vacs that you can attach your components to, like a grinder and things like that. But you know, when it comes to like real accurate cuts, maybe going around this window, I'm still gonna use an open-ended grinder to cut it. Uh, and you know, it's like, it, you know, most of the clients don't have a problem with the dust at the first day because they kind of expect it during the demo. But by the time through day three or day four, they're like, I can't handle this anymore. You got to get out of my house. <laughs> so, so if I could avoid anything to create dust, and this does not create any dust, there's nothing to create dust with, um, all the better. So foam board, definitely a dustless type of install. So, yeah. <laughs> So there is definitely a lot of reasons to, to use the new foam boards. Lone Wolf on uh, YouTube was saying he's got to get away from Hardy. He needs to get into some of these foam boards. They absolutely should, man. It definitely is a game changer with the speed. Uh, as you were able to see, the cutting of it is very, very simple. Uh, you know, just a simple utility knife and no dust. And Lone Wolf on YouTube, uh, Hardy Backer, I despise that stuff. I love it for exteriors of homes. Like if you're doing any of their siding, I think it makes a lot of sense. Bugs don't want to eat it. If you paint it, it lasts a very, very long time. Uh, but for tub surrounds, I, I really despise Hardy Backer. It, does, it, it just loves water. It's a very thirsty type of product. So whether you're doing, if you do liquid waterproofing over it, it just kind of zaps that first layer immediately. And you have to, I mean, you always have to do two coats of liquid on most circumstances. But cutting it is painful. Um, it's very, very dusty. It's brittle, like the corners can crack very easily. I know Lone Wolf on YouTube, you, you know all of this. But um, you know, one of the things that uh, is really problematic with Hardy Backers is, is, is the fact that it draws out the water so quickly. So if, if you were to put this in a space and you didn't do any liquid waterproofing, you go to you go put trowel, some thin set over the hardy backer. By the time you go to set the towel, it's already hardened because it's sucking all the moisture out of that thin set. The proper way to do that if you were just to go directly over this is to wipe down it with a damp sponge and then tile it. But uh, really, there is no reason to use hardy backer anymore. There's an argument for cement board, regular like wonder board. You know, there's a lot of, I just actually in this basement bathroom, I did cement board and it is easily, you know, cement board is still, you know, available everywhere. So I understand uh, the draw towards it, but once you get your hands on some of this foam board, it's just going to be very, very simple. So pro baths on um, Facebook was asking me, where do you get this stuff? I have some links in here. Uh, basically, if you go to hydroblock.com, go to their um, locator and you'll be able to find it in your own areas so this isn't uh unfortunately i mean it, it is throughout the united states i don't know how far out you know if canada or anything like that carries this stuff quite yet uh, but the dow towels d-a-l um d-a-l tau dow towel uh, a lot of them are starting to carry this stuff and I th i'm pretty sure if you go to any of them you can ask them uh, you know especially if you're a contractor <laughs> i think somebody was saying at 31 bucks a sheet you would go ahead and buy a whole pallet. I'm sure you, if you went to any of those companies like that, they would, they would order it in for you. And that, and you know, so I uh, obviously was uh, given this product to, to demonstrate and install, but uh, you know, I did call around the dial towels and stuff and that's what they were saying for contractor pricing. Now you have to realize if you're a homeowner buying this stuff at distributors, it's, it's going to be more expensive. It's going to be the retail price. Um, and you know, you can, you can obviously argue and, and try to whittle them down on the price, but uh, anything that you see online, any of these foam boards, whether it's a uh, Curdy board, Weedy, um, Go board, if you go online and look at the price, it's outrageous. But when you go to the distributors, it's like half the cost. So, but I thought this was very, very reasonable. Um, you know, Go board, I was basically spending the same amount of money for this at, at you know, if it's at 31 bucks a sheet. Um, but that's, um, you know, again, contractor pricing, it's going to be a little bit more when you're getting into being a homeowner, buying this stuff. Um, 
and yeah, I mean, it just really is a quick, efficient thing. Basically, what I did here was five sheets of uh, hydro band or hydro band, hydro block board. I needed a hundred uh, set things of screws, uh, five sausage tubes. So I always do recommend using the bigger tubes of sealant. So this is, goes into like a sausage tube. This is basically twice the amount of um, uh, sealant as you do in the re those regular tubes. But if you even just went to Hydroblock, you can go to where to buy, find a dealer, and then locate the area that you live and it'll pinpoint on the map where it is. So it's right now, it's, it's primarily just, you know, being sold uh, at, on a dealer level. So Daltow, I think Menards, um, we don't have any Menards here, over here in Pittsburgh, but I believe um, there's a lot more further west. So Menards is carrying it. So that, that if, you're, if you're west of here, that might be a great way to go about it. In my course here, this is just highlighting my other courses I have. I do have instruction on going over using Go board. I do have instruction on using Schluter Curdy board and then uh, using cement board with the waterproofing as well. And I also do Weedy. This is a very, very similar product to Weedy uh, in a lot of ways, identical. And I also do sheet membranes. So I have some sheet membranes. So I'm not like just glued to one, but I, I will say that the sealant application uh, with the foam board is my absolute favorite. Curdy board is great, but I love using the sealant application like Go board, Weedy, and now this Hydro Block. They're all very similar types of um, installs and they're just, they're just so much easier to do. So let me get you the other video here for the next part of the program, which is overcoming the tub flange. And that's always a headache for some people uh, of, of overcoming it. There's different strategies to go about it. And it, you know, again, meeting up with an existing uh, wall makes this a significantly more challenging. Uh, so know that, you know, that's where it's gonna be a little bit complicated. I really personally like to gut the bathrooms completely down to the studs and start all new, but I understand that some people just can't afford to do everything. But we're gonna go over overcoming a uh, tubs uh, flange and different ways to go about doing that because there's multiple ways to do it. And let me grab and shrink this down. I'm gonna shrink this so we don't have to, you don't have to see that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's always somewhat of a question mark on it uh, as far as uh, overcoming that tub flange. So let's get into that. All right, I think that's wide enough here. And it's just gonna go over those three different common ways. It's only a minute and I just have a, a real quick demonstration on it. But I wanna go over three different ways to overcome a tub flange. So this is a jacuzzi tub, and as you can see, I have a good quarter inch thick flange that I screwed up to my structural, up to my framing. So one of the problems is, is you don't wanna bring your board down and bellow it out because that would create like kind of a bellow area. It would also create like a little bit, a bit of a void behind there. So there's three different ways to overcome it. Number one is just to simply sit this down right on top of the flange and put sealant and seal all the way across here. Number two, we can actually create a rabbit joint here and just cut part of this out so that that's the, it will overcome the flange down to the bottom of the floor. And then lastly, just to simply fur out the entire wall again, and then you can just bring that straight down to the top. This is actually probably the easiest way, but not really practical in most situations because if you have existing drywall on the outside, on these side walls, you're not gonna be able to shim it out without having to remove all the drywall to get everything even up. But on the back side of the tub, this can really work out great. You can just add another shim, bring it up, bring it straight down, and you're good to go. Okay, so yeah, I wanted to go over that real quickly, just because, you know, that's the main thing about my course is that, you know, I'm, I'm gonna probably have like 50 tutorials on here. And then if you're on YouTube or Facebook learning how to do this stuff, um, you know, obviously you can search around and continue to find uh, your, your the person that you, trust they give you the right information but the course really keeps everything organized so you can just come down to the actual section that you're having trouble with and learn how to do it i, I kind of like having it broken up so that was just like a real quick summary of how to go over overcome that tub flange and be able to do it so let me just click on the, the course part of this here so i have to always have the video right up the top and in the curriculum on the left hand side but yeah three common ways is uh you know 
all tub flanges aren't the same. So this is a jacuzzi tub and it had a fairly thick flange. It's almost about three eighths of an inch thick. There's a, you know, if you were doing a steel tub, those are like only maybe like a quarter uh, after you put the uh, washers that tuck it to the wall. And then if you had cast iron, well, it's kind of like of a, it's almost, it's almost kind of a non-existent uh, flange in some way. And you're basically just butting right on top of it. So, but really my preferred method, if I were doing everything new in the bathroom, is just to shim everything out. Just put half inch or seven sixteenths inch strips of plywood, kind of like I do on the back here, and just run that board straight over right onto the tub deck. That really is the simplest way, but in a lot of situations, especially with existing walls, you just don't, aren't able to do that. Uh, so number one is to just set it right on top of the flange. Uh, and then fill that gap. That's what we're gonna be doing basically on each side of the, the shower because we're meeting up with those walls and we didn't have any ability to do that or you know, basically the, that wall board would be outside of the, 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 the finished plaster area. So tub flange was basically flush with the board. So the sealant application is the simplest way to go about that. Second option is to actually notch it. We did that on the back side of the tub. That is definitely a way to do it. Again, it's easier just to shim out the wall, especially on the back wall, because there was nothing hindering me to be able to do that. But I did want to demonstrate uh, cutting this and basically a table saw is really the best way to do that. It's really tough to do it any other way. I mean, utility knife, I mean, a lot of those flanges are about an inch, inch and a quarter thick. So it's really difficult to get a, a skilled hand with a circular saw. It, you really kind of need a table saw to do that efficiently. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's some other really skilled guys out there that can do it other ways, but you're really only talking about having a very thin flange too. I mean, it's like, it's like an eighth inch wide uh, piece. So it's real easy to crack too. So I, you know, I do this occasionally. I don't really prefer this method. I just feel like that little flimsy flap is just kind of problematic and it can bellow out too. So if you had that too much sealant underneath of it, it can bellow out and cause problems. So if you really can, I would really advise just like shimming out the wall and bringing it straight down. That really makes it, that makes the most sense. So, all right, and then tools and supplies. This is gonna be another thing that makes this really simple. There isn't a whole lot that you need for it. So let's go back and uh, I'll re-shrink that deal. Um, so here's my tub surround again, and we'll get this next video up. And this is just gonna be about the tools and supplies very simple you know obviously there's really not much to it let me see if this is going to work here so with the hydro block system there's really okay yeah so with the hydro block system there's really not sorry about that let me get your thing back up here all right so yeah this is just going to be a real quick two minute video about the tools there are some things that do make this a little bit easier so uh, pay attention on this one and uh, we'll go through it Hydro block system, there's really not a whole lot of tools you really need. The most important one is just a regular utility knife, because that's gonna help. That's really all you need to do to cut it. A standard uh, putty knife, and then a quarter trowel is really kind of nice, because it helps really get it nice and smooth in the corners when you do the sealing application. Now there are two different types of, um, not two different types, but two different sizes of tubes. This is for a sausage tube gun, and that's what I like to use. If you're a contractor, definitely advise this. It's just a lot less waste and you get a lot more out of a big sausage tube like this compared to the regular 10 and a half inch or 10 and a half ounce tubes. So we're gonna use the sausage and it comes with a box of screws. And then probably one of the most important parts is getting some of these clean wipes. This really helps out getting it off your hands. I'll definitely have it all over me by the time I'm done. And this stuff really does do a good job of removing that. So pretty simple, a couple other things. We got, we got a valve seal for around our shower valve, and then we also have um, some pipe seals. This is going to be really important for our tub spout back here. And then we have one for the shower head, which is not a bad idea, but probably not as important as that tub spout. So let's get to it. We're going to set our backboard first. And like I mentioned, there's really three different ways to go about that tubs uh, going over, the, overcoming the tub flange. And in this particular situation, we're going to go and notch. We notched out our board. So now this is going to slide over our flange. But you could also shim out the entire wall. You know, if you just use a, a half inch material or quarter inch material, 
you could shim this out and then bring the board straight down over top of the tub deck. And that is definitely one easy way to do it. Most of the time you have that ability on the back wall of the shower, but not always so much on the sides because you're kind of coming up with two existing drywall. So we're gonna show you another method going over this flange once we get the back wall set. Okay, so there you go. Uh, the tools are very simple. The corner trowel is definitely kind of nice. It makes a nice, easy corner sealant, it makes it completely sealed in, in the corner. Not necessary, a three inch, four inch putty knife is really your primary tool along with the utility knife. And then having those valve seals, I mean, some of this stuff can be like just overly over the top. Um, the valve seal, I mean, you know, most of the time you have an excussion plate that already has a seal on it. So it is kind of go, going a little overboard, but it is nice to have that if you're a contractor doing this for a um, homeowner or something like that. It's just good insurance on your end that everything is completely sealed and, and well done. Um, Splananza on, on YouTube asked me, uh, you know, any wisdom on the comparing this to go board. So very, very similar product. And I've used a ton of go board if you've been watching my channel. And I think go board is terrific. Uh, it's a great board. I just feel that this cementitious backer on this is just a lot better, um, more of a, a, a webbed type of thing. So this has a more, I feel like it has a more rigidity to it than go board. It's not itchy like go board. I get a lot here, a lot of complaints about that, but I do believe that they're actually coming out with a board that's not going to have all those fibers on it. Um, but this is definitely, it has a more of a rigid uh, feel to it. And then what I'm told, and I'm not 100% sure on go board, I, I believe that if you penetrate the surface of go board, it's, it's compromised. But if you penetrate this, it's no problem as long as you just don't go all the way through the board. Um, other than that, um, other than just being a, a, a better, stiffer board, I just, uh, there really isn't a whole lot different. Uh, you know, this is gonna, you're using washers and screws on this one. You do, go board does have uh, washers as well if you wanted to use them. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, either way. I like the cementitious backer. I feel like there's like just like a better coating um, of something a little bit more grip, but hey, I've, I've done hundreds of sheets of go board. I have nothing but uh, good things to say about them. Um, I just think that, that you know, if I, if I had the same price at the same store, I'd, I'd probably be buying the hydro block board just because I, I, I tend to gravitate towards it. I like it. You know, it really does remind me of, of Weedy and Weedy. I basically started out my whole career using Weedy products uh, with their shower pans and systems back way back in um, 2010, I think was one of my first Weedy showers. So I was a real big fan of theirs. They just got, they just gotten way out of price range for most scenarios, but they still do have a great product. I still use it. Um, just not, not as much anymore because there's products like this coming out that are kind of making it a lot more, less expensive. So again, a corner trowel, uh, a sausage tube definitely is going to save you on that. There's so much sealant, especially like around this window that you're going to want to use the sausage tube. It gets you a lot more out there. You'd be basically having to change out those tubes. You probably need, I got five sausage tubes, which is basically 10 tubes of the regular sealant. So you're changing out those tubes like every other minute with the smaller stuff. So if you're doing this stuff all the time, I, it's not it's not feasible for just a DIYer to buy the sausage tube. I totally get it. But if you're a contractor, it's definitely the way to go. 100 screws, that's all you really needed. Like I said, I got the valve seal, the pipe seals, uh, and those are all kind of like, you know, things that, um, you know, basically are, are uh, over the top type of things. The pipe seal and the, and the valve seal, you can, certainly have other ways of sealing everything to it. But again, go to the uh, hydroblock.com and go to where to buy and it'll show all the locations. So there is a lot of dial towels that are carrying it, a lot of other specialty stores that I see down here. Um, American Orleans, that's basically a dial towel. So it seems like they're gonna start really ramping up their production. Uh, best, best tile up in New Jersey is carrying it. So they're, yeah, it's definitely getting around. So it's pretty cool. Um, all right, so notching the foam board. And uh, I'm just gonna show you a quick demonstration on that. So let's click you back over to my shower here. And uh, you guys can stare at that while I get this other one prepped here. But yeah, good good question, uh, Splanza on YouTube that, uh, you know, it, there is so many different methods and different ways of going about things that it is sometimes, uh, 
you know, like which one do you really want to go with? And, you know, I've been using them all. If you've been part of my channel, you've seen me use every type of system out there. I'm trying to think of what else, you know, I do want to try my pays board. They just came out with a board, uh, which I'm excited to try and, uh, and just, you know, really try to find out what the best one is. But, you know, the sealant application, there's hands down, no matter what comes out, it's still going to be my favorite way to go. And if I was a contractor trying to do as many jobs as I could, I would just buy a pallet of this, get the best price possible because you're just going to go through it. If you're doing one bathroom after another, you're going to go through it and it'd be nice to just have all the excess materials there ready to go for each job. All right. So looking at the next one is about notching this back wall here. And uh, yeah, we got, you know, we're about halfway through here. We still got a lot to go through. So. Okay, so the tub flange, we're sticking out a quarter inch, so we have to address that. I can't just bring my board down and bring it over or you're gonna bellow it out and it's gonna really look bad with the tile work. So the way we're gonna address this is we're actually gonna notch out our board so that it can slide over that tub flange <coughs> and meet the tub deck. So let's go ahead and bring our whole board out and we'll create that dado. Okay, so you can see how that's whole Wrap a joint it out there. Whether you're overcoming the tub flange and bringing the board straight down, or you're what we're doing, you still want to, you want to put a bead of sealant all the way along this flange. And since we're going to be basically having that little flange come across there. I'm gonna bring it all the way across the top. So you can kind of see that oozing out of that joint. And that's all nice and straight. So you can see all that sealant kind of oozing out of that joint. That means that we got that nice and sealed in there and that kind of overcomes that flange pretty nicely. Okay, so on the first row, you kind of want to be six inches off of the tub deck. And the main reason for this, and this is kind of the same with the showers as well, is that if you pinch it down here, you could potentially, um, you know, cause a, too much strain on that little flange piece that we put in there and possibly break that off. But if you were doing a, a basically bringing this down over top of here, you don't want to pull this away from the joint in any way. So bring your first row six inches off of the tub deck for your first row. And you're basically just making them flush with the wall. So just tighten them enough to where, you know, they're basically a little bit recessed within the wall. Anything you puncture like that will be able to fill in with sealant. Now this next screw, I'm going to wait until I get my next board on because then you can do one screw and pinch both of them. Save yourself a little bit, of, a couple of these washers. Any excess silicone or uh, sealant, you can just wipe smooth. Cut around the window, you could use an oscillating tool, you could use a utility knife, or you can use a router, or uh, basically a drywall router here. So I'm gonna use this, I'm just gonna basically zip out my window. Two boards meet. I'm gonna put a generous amount of sealant right along that seam here. See that oozing out, that's good. This little piece. I'll tell you what, this is a great thing about this type of board is you can, if your ceiling's a little bit uneven, 
You just easily scribe cut this. deal with the window later on. I've got five sheets. This will be more than enough, but you want to keep your scrap pieces that do something like this. Okay, so very simple. Um, yeah, I mean, really streamlined installation. Uh, and as you can see, it's literally just, um, biggest thing is, is just making sure that everywhere that the board meets board, you want to add some of that sealant. So in between the sheets, uh, in any of the corners, which we'll be getting into next. Um, but cutting that flange, like I said, is definitely a way to do it. It's just really honestly my uh, least favorite way of doing it just because of how difficult, um, you know, the cut is. I mean, it's a little bit dangerous using it out on the table saw as well, and it's, it just makes a real flimsy bottom. But totally sufficient if you, if you have the patience and the time to be able to do that. Uh, it just know that uh, and really we keep this little piece. This is, was really nice this little strip We ended up using it for the edges of the tub later on in this Series it was really helpful to be able to waterproof the flange up against the edges uh, of, of the shower that's another really highly important area that we'll be getting into here soon um, But yeah, basically notching it 3 8 by an inch and a quarter. That was a pretty thick flange most flanges uh, especially acrylic tubs do end up having fairly thick flanges like this, so know that that is gonna be a little bit difficult. But anytime that you see the oozing sealant, make sure that you have enough. That's why having the sausage tube makes it a little bit easier because you're able to get a lot more out of the caulking tube. Uh, and it's just a matter of screwing everything every 12 inches, recessing those washers, pretty straightforward stuff. I did like using uh, the oscillating tool to cut out the window. I thought that was a lot easier and faster. Uh, than even just using that drywall knife. So get, getting one of these, uh, you know, cordless uh, oscillating tools is definitely a, uh, a helpful tool when it comes to the bathroom remodeling. So getting into the side walls, this is really kind of more of the same, but we're just going to be going over the tub flange in a different scenario. So let me get you on to that one. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it really is a quick, efficient thing. I wish I was that fast at like screwing them all together, but uh, you know, there's no reason to watch me <laughs> take the time to actually screw that all in. But really, it only took uh, about 20 minutes to do that back wall. But, you know, when you're only getting like five sheets or something like that, you definitely want to preserve and keep, um, you know, some of the scrap pieces to do things like around a window or a custom niche. You know, I'm doing this window. You can easily have enough scrap pieces to make your own recessed shower niche versus buying a pre-made one. They do make pre-made ones. But if you have the extra material, it really is simple just to be able to create it all out of the extra board and the sealant for that matter. So I definitely highly recommend that. But let's go through doing the side walls and then overcoming the tub flange where you're just basically butting the board directly on top of that. Let's go ahead and do our side wall here. On this one, we're just gonna be butting straight up to the flange. So we wanna make sure we have a good sealant amount right on top of that flange. So much easier so that's definitely a really easy way to cut this now go ahead and set this into place now you do need a sealant where you're meeting the other board in the corner here so put a generous amount all the way down that corner slide this right down to the top of that flange.
Same thing, since we already have shims and everything and our flange is sticking way out of here, we're gonna have to basically just go on top of the tub flange, the 30 and a half, 31. There's not a lot of room here, so about an inch and a half is that flange. Indicates my pipe right there. And then our shower valve, very easy. Just basically puncture the back and that'll indicate the middle of our valve. Four and a half inch hole works nicely. top of your tub flange. So, yeah, you know, it definitely is an efficient system, no doubt about it. I love being able to just take that foam backer board and beat it up against the shower valve and be able to get a perfect indication of where that is. Cement board, hardy backer, you were never really able to do that. So it's definitely a nice thing. And plus, the scribe cutting of it is just tremendous. Being able to fit that in between those two walls really makes it nice and easy. Uh, you know, when, you're, when your hardy backer is sticking outside of your plaster area, it definitely takes a lot more effort. But the key points here is just adding enough sealant. So using this sausage tube really helps out. Uh, I think Andrew on Facebook was mentioning I should get an automatic electric caulking gun for a regular caulking tube. That works great as well. You know, but if you're using those little 10-inch tubes, you know, it's just a matter of getting enough on there. Um, but you really want to be generous with it in the corners because that's what you're basically adjoining it to and then making sure that you have enough on top of this tub flange so when you rest that down that you're actually able to squeeze a little bit of that sealing out. Now we will be filling this entire cavity uh, later on but it is good to have some on top of that flange just to make sure that's 100% sealed. But scribe cutting really is the best part of this is being able to be able to maneuver the board in place and just cut it in place. It really makes it uh, easy. It's just, it's just a treat at any time. You know, I've used so much cement board over the years and it's such a treat every time I get to do this because it's just, I remember how hard it was always to have to cut things. And if you use the grinder or something like that, you're just creating an enormous amount of dust too. Fasteners every 12 inches, again, sealant in between anything that the board meets. A spade bit helps to, for the toilet flange and then a hole saw for around the valve. A four and a half inch hole is what you're going to need. Uh, for that actual shower valve seal to go in. Now there are a lot of shower valves that are not gonna work with those valve seals, so pay attention to what you're installing. In this particular bathroom, it was just a standard, I think it was Moen, or maybe it's Delta. Actually, I think it's Delta, but it's just a standard, you know, regular seven and a half inch discussion plate. Uh, and so you're able to just do a four and a half inch hole and that, that'll fit there. Now, if you have like a square box or you have some kind of, you know, a lot of these Amazon ones are coming up with the squares. You really can't do uh, the valve seal on that. You're just going to have to seal the board right around that box. And there's one nice thing about the Amazon boxes. They protrude out and then you can just seal all the way around them. So pay attention to the valve that you're actually installing. Oh, no, this is actually a cooler. This is a cooler valve. I forgot about that. So, um, yeah, so it really uh, streamlines the installation. Really not much to conversate on that. We're going to go on right into the window framing. This is the, this is a really big um, problematic area for people. This is definitely something that needs to be 100% waterproof. If you're not 100% waterproof, uh, this is going to be a real bad uh, area for liability if you're a contractor or, um, you know, it's just something that uh, it's going to take a lot of abuse and you really want to make sure that you're sealing everything around here. So we're gonna get into the 
that part of the course here and uh, we'll discuss a little bit more about going around the window but this is uh, really where the, the sealant application really makes things a lot lot easier. Okay so the window probably the most critical part of this entire tub surround because it's something that uh, really isn't that friendly to having water to. So first off we need to cut some of our foam insulation out of here nice and flush. Okay, so most important thing about a window is making sure that you actually have vinyl window to bond into. So make sure you build out your window enough for the board to completely go inside of the window frame so that you're budding this completely to vinyl because the biggest part about this seal is going right around right onto the vinyl. So you don't want it to be halfway on the on the board. You want this entire edge being bonded to the window, especially the bottom. So we're going to start with the bottom, do our sides and then do our top. It's kind of like window flashing. You know, when water comes down, it goes around, but we're going to, everything's going to be sealed. So we don't really have much to worry about. So let's just go ahead and put our bottom plate on first. I want to make sure you get plenty of sealant on top of this board. So this would be kind of just like the, re the regular pieces of board come together, put a nice generous amount. And then I'm also going to put some on the back edge here and up against the window. So you can see I have a whole, whole lot of this on this sill. And I'm putting more on, the, on some on the base of this too because I'm kind of sloping this towards the shower. So you want to make sure you can see that all oozing up against that window. That's a good seal right there. And then you want to make sure that you're pitching towards the shower because you don't want water to be sitting against the window. So just make sure that this is pitching and then obviously making sure it's level that way as well. Making sure, so we're going to apply some sealant over these screw holes. So this will be end up being completely covered, but if you did have any of this green exposed, it's no problem at all. It's completely waterproof all the way through this board. So you have nothing to worry about there. Now I don't want all this stuff being on my window. So I'm just going to basically pull some of this away from my window. Now you can get this stuff off of your window. Don't worry if you've got any on there. You know, later on you can use some acetone or something to remove it. But it, you can avoid getting it all smeared on there the better but now that's a nice really nice seal to the bottom of that window okay so put a generous amount right at the corner all the way up the side and then all the way down the window this is why the sealing application is so easy because you're literally just sealing it to that window and that's all there really is to it You want to see that oozing out of that window frame. Again, pull, pull this away from the window a little bit. Okay, so yeah, most important part here is getting that completely bonded to that vinyl window frame. So making sure that you have everything kind of framed in at that framing stage so that when you slide that board in there, 
it'll meet directly onto that vinyl. You want to have that really nice, big, generous bead of caulking so that that can po totally embed right into it. And in the windowsill, obviously that's the most critical area of the whole thing and making sure that that is oozing out of that window. The sides, you know, I mean, try to make sure that everything's oozing out of that, but the bottom, you really want to see that kind of lifting up a whole bunch of, out of that windowsill because that's obviously going to be the area that you're going to have the most damage or the most, um, you know, water hitting the actual surface. And then pitching that sill is really important too. You don't want to have water resting against your window. Um, even when you go to do the towel layer and stuff, if, you, if your waterproofing underneath of there is not pitched, um, the water underneath the towel is going to sit against there and it's eventually going to find its way into that window frame. So this is the reason why if you're planning on doing a, um, you know, a new tub surround and you have an existing window, you want to take the time and order that window in advance and then put a new one in because at this point, like it, it'd be very difficult uh, to change out that window later on and as much sealant and everything, like you would never be able to change this window out. You would, uh, I mean, I shouldn't say never, but it's definitely gonna be a harder challenge to make sure that it's 100% waterproof. And I really wouldn't leave it up to a window company making sure that that's gonna be 100% sealed. They're just gonna basically use a whole bunch of silicone uh, around that and hope that it's gonna last. And, and a lot of times that's not. This polyurethane sealant, this is definitely a far superior type of caulking than any type of regular silicone. So just know that this is a premium product that Thinset actually bonds to as well. But I wanna give a shout out to John Beasley on Facebook. Hey man, he's an old high school friend of mine. He's from Kansas. He was saying he's currently waterproofing his bathroom floor with Detra and laying fresh towel based off of my videos. Thanks so much for watching, man. Uh, yeah, and Schluter, uh, Detra, that's definitely still one of my main types of uh, products for floors. It's an isolation uncoupling membrane. It kind of replaces the idea of having to use cement board or hardy backer. Uh, but speaking of like Schluter, doing a Schluter window frame, trying to waterproof this with the, the membrane is an absolute nightmare. I absolutely can't stand doing it because it's just all the membranes that you kind of have to kind of embed over each other. And then you have to t basically take the membrane and seal it to the window. Uh, so it's really, uh, this is a real um, bonus being able to do this with the, the full sealant application. It makes it so much easier than using any type of membrane and you're not getting any buildup. As long as you kind of like trowel everything smooth, you're good to go. Now there, there is a final waterproofing step here. This was just basically embedding the board. So know that, that we're gonna be going and dressing all of these uh, screw holes and stuff with more sealant. So. If you're doing a window like this, get two tubes of that 10 ounce uh, tubes of sealant just to do this window or just another whole entire sausage tube so that you can have enough to make sure you seal it. Because there's, there's a lot of sealant that goes along into this, but just the flexibility of this sealant is, is very superior to silicone. So any, um, you know, basically expansion and contraction of that window is, is not going to be a problem. So. Uh, yeah, so that's really that's really it. I mean, that makes the, the window uh, the worrisome of having uh, any problems with the uh, the window a lot lot easier and uh, very streamlined. So it's just a matter of making sure that you get that framing set up so that, that board completely meets that vinyl window. Now, you know, a lot of you might not have vinyl windows. You might have metal, but again, pay attention to what kind of your shape your window is. It's not. You know, I mean, windows are not cheap. I mean, I think that we paid $400 for this one because we got the obscure glass because you didn't really, you know, the, the one previous to this had a window in it that was, um, uh, it had the kind of like a film over it that they, they kind of put in. And th none of those films ever last. They always peel off and they look really, really crummy. So, uh, you know, ordering a window with the obscure, obscure glass will take three to four weeks to get in, um, maybe even longer in some areas. So, you know, again, in my course behind here, I have about installing uh, the, a window and I have a tutorial on how to go about measuring it because, you know, you're gonna have to order this before you demo the tub. You don't wanna de demo everything and then try to order the window or you'll never get your bathroom done. So, but anyways, yeah, pitching that shower sill is really important, applying enough sealant underneath of that to bond well, cutting the exhaust off nice and flush, that oscillating tool really helps out for that. 
and it's just basically sealant, sealant, sealant. So very uh, streamlined process with this. And then uh, what else do I have here? I have at the bottom here of my course, I have, I have the go board installation, the curdy board, cement board, weedy, the sheet membrane. So if you're not really convinced that the sealant application is for you, I definitely have other courses that are gonna be able to help you out uh, with those different methods. Uh, so, all right, so the tub, flange, tub waterproofing and flange, this is the next big item to do. Uh, and again, make sure that you have enough sealant to do this. You don't wanna run out um, at this stage. So right down at that tub seal, you can see here on the right side, or both sides, I should say, you come zooming in here. This is the actual bathroom upstairs that we're in. So just know that uh, I'm still working on it. We're actually gonna be getting into the tiling tomorrow. But yeah, you can see how everything's sealed right against that tub rim. And that's what we're gonna discuss here on how to go about doing that. Really, you know, obviously it's just as simple as probably what it looks like. So let's go back to this and start this two minute video. On this. Another real critical area to waterproof is right against the downside, the edge of the tub. And since the flange is kind of sticking out and we're trying to want to keep everything flush with this, we're just going to use a strip of the board that we cut off of that back sheet. So this is just the, the part that we cut to overcome this flange. And we're just going to seal this right to this right to the flange and kind of build that out a little bit. This is a real critical area because water sometimes always comes down over the edge of the tub and then deteriorates that. So if this was drywall, a lot of times when I see drywall along the tub, that's usually a major problem. So if you can put waterproofing down alongside your tub, at least a couple of inches, it'll make it last a lot longer. Put a real fair amount of sealant all the way down the edge of this tub. And this will just go in bed right over top of this. Since this flange, this flange is even with my board, I'm just gonna fill this entire cavity with the sealant. So, and don't worry that, that uh, this type of sealant, the inset will actually bond to it. So that really is just about as simple as it gets as far as uh, addressing that seam and uh, making sure that's 100% waterproof. Again, this is not just your primary, that's like your silicone or any type of uh, other material that is gonna mold or create any problems. This is like a, a special polyurethane type of blend and it's going to allow not only the thin set to bond your tile to it, but it's, it's going to have that elasticity to it that is going to uh, really keep this a long uh, term type of waterproofing joint. So really a uh, pretty streamlined installation when it comes to that. <laughs> Andrew on Facebook said he hates the paneling on here. I agree with you, man. I don't like it either. It's kind of like it's completely against uh, everything I stand for having a, a, a fake wood um, tile, but uh, hey, I wasn't the one uh, making the decisions on this. This is just what the, the customer, I mean, you should have seen the tub surround originally. It was really in bad shape. So this is gonna be a tremendous upgrade, but I fully agree with you. I don't like the uh, wood paneling either. It's really just a matter of filling in that joint. It's that simple with the sealant application. Uh, and if you feel that you're not 100% sold on that sealant application. There are different ways to go about doing that. For instance, you can use uh, a curdy membrane I have in my course for the shower. So you can actually just use a, um, a membrane on that portion there. So basically feathering out a 
piece of sheet membrane all the way across there. That is a really great way to go about doing it. You basically thin set the top layer and then you put the sealant in the tub gap and then you cover everything over with the actual deal. So I do have a tutorial on how to go about doing that. That is a very uh, strong way to do it as well rather than having all of that exposed. All right, so the final details of this, it's gonna be more sealant, I'm sure you probably guessed. But uh, yeah, we're gonna go over uh, just the rules that you wanna kinda of apply for that. We're gonna put that, that uh, valve seal in there as well. So going back to my shower while I organize my next video. Uh, but yeah, it really is um, one of my preferred methods to go about doing this. So final details for this HydroBlock system. Let me see here, all right, and play. Screw holes basically need like an inch overlap. I can basically just fill them all in with the sealant. Your seams again. around the window just go across this entire seam make sure we get these little and again if you have any of this green exposed it's not a big deal just know that the uh, thin set will actually bond better to the sealant than the actual like exposed green stuff here. So it is kind of better to completely cover it, but it's not it's not necessary. It might not be a bad idea just to basically do this whole sill completely sealed surface here. Put a nice generous bead down the corner. This is a mixing valve seal. This is great for sealing around your valve. A lot of these discussion plates don't really seal all that well. So let's just make sure that this is centered around here. So this has two sides to it. One has a big fat end, this side. This side actually goes into the wall. So just center that up. That looks all right. And then you can use thin set or you can just use the sealant to do this just that if you do sealant you're going to want to spread this out to make it nice and smooth okay and then one of the most critical parts is around your tub spout this guy will go right over top of this and seal. Okay, and I'm actually gonna just seal my copper to it. Okay, so now you don't have to be dependent on your tub spout to prevent water from going back there. This is a very common area where leaks happen because there really isn't any type of seal around your tub spout. And uh, if water gets behind the tub spout, it can just leak right through that hole. So having this completely sealed 
when sure that you won't have any problems there. This is this could be considered overkill, but it's a good thing to completely seal around here so that there's no leaks around your shower head. Okay, so the big takeaways here is uh, they have some nope. sealant wipes. That's really helpful. Helpful to get all this off of there. So these wipes have a an ointment on it that will help clear off all this sealant. Yeah, don't uh, don't be doing a project like this if you have a wedding to go to the next day because it still it still could leave some stuff on there. Maybe have some acetone as well to help you out with that. Um, but the big takeaways on this final sealant application is trying to just get an inch overlap on all the screws in all of the seams, essentially. You're basically just coating everything uh, with it and uh, making sure that everything's 100% sealed. So again, you're gonna be going through a lot of sealant. This is a sealant application type of product. Just make sure that you smooth everything out flat so that you don't have any issues when you're actually setting the tile. And uh, as you see around this window, we really used quite a bit. I think it makes a lot of sense to be able to just coat that entire window sill. Uh, and if you didn't pitch that property for some whatever reason, you could pitch it with the, the sealant. You can build this stuff up. This stuff is gonna, this stuff will definitely harden up and be able to take towel later on. So if you didn't build that up enough to make it slope, double check it, add a little bit more sealant on it, coat that entire thing and make sure that it pitches properly. Uh, the corners are another, obviously a real important area. It's not as, I mean, it's critical on a tub surround, but it's more important for a shower. And a lot of these methods are basically everything that you're doing with a shower. You're just gonna have a shower base that's gonna be different. Corner trowel definitely makes it nice for this. Definitely not something that's 100% uh, necessary. Same with this valve seal. Uh, this is definitely extra insurance. And the main way that this is basically working, that is if, if any water got behind the tile, you see this little rubber gasket uh, lip that's out there, water will just kind of seep around that versus going into that whole cavity. But I'd say the most important aspect is to put it uh, around your, your uh, tub spout. This is where I see a lot of rot. Uh, when I take out old showers, basically everything around the shower valve is basically just kind of crumbling apart. And a lot of it has to do with uh, water getting behind the tub spout and then just kind of deteriorating the wall. So if you can seal that completely, that's one way to definitely, uh, an excellent way to go. The other aspect is just making sure that you bring it down alongside the tub. I always recommend bring your tile a couple inches outside of your shower so that if anything in contact with the tub, any water that comes over the edge of the, 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 um, the tub, it's not gonna deteriorate. So that there's two areas that I see the most problems with. One is the tub spout where water's getting behind there and deteriorating the wall behind the tub spout. And number two is alongside the tub where you have drywall just budding right up to the actual tub and all that just kind of bubbles off or causes problems. So if you seal those two areas, you're gonna be way ahead of the herd, way above uh, what people were doing 20 years ago. Um, but there is an argument to say, hey, some of these uh, projects um, that people built 40 years ago, you know, if there's a little bit of mold these days, that's not, you know, it's not the end of the world and, and you're going to be replacing it anyway. So, but this is, uh, you know, this is just definitely the better upgraded way to go so that you never have any rot. You don't have any mold. You don't have anything that's going to uh, be a problem. This is going to last for decades to come uh, and with very little issue other than just, you know, cleaning the grout line. So obviously um, tiling, grout, things like that, you still got to keep things clean. And speaking of which, get some of these cleaning wipes. They'll definitely make getting some of that off there. You could also use rubber gloves. That would have been a smart way to go about it as well. But I also wanted to mention in my course as well that you can just basically, at the end of each one of these, if you had a comment, you had a question about your own specific project, you can leave me a comment there. That's where I really dedicate my time because anything that is asked there, I will be able to help you uh, the next person out that might have the same issue. So the course is really there to support you, highlight everything step by step, 
and be able to allow you to really efficiently move on with the project. All right, so our final video is just my final review thoughts on it. Um, and again, I mean, these are just my honest opinions about this. Uh, it's been, uh, you know, this is a, a system that I'm very familiar with, the sealant application uh, and this type of foam board. So uh, I was very, very happy with it. And I'm glad that I found a product that is affordable and be able to, um, you know, be able to get back to using this kind of material. So, all right, let me just show you this last little one minute video uh, basically wraps everything up. So there is no doubt that was one of the quickest, easiest installs you can do, especially around this window. Now I feel really comfortable about toweling this and this is gonna last for you know decades to come. So HydroBlock, definitely a win. You know, this board is definitely awesome. You'll love it. So I definitely highly recommend it. <laughs> you like it? Yeah, the top. Yeah, it's all waterproof now. It's real easy. Now we can go ahead and install our towel over top of it. Yeah. It's already it's already not even sticky anymore. It was only an hour later. So what is this stuff? it's the uh, sealant. Uh. It kind of makes everything waterproof. So but I'm telling you, if you can install drywall, you can definitely install this stuff. It's such a pleasure to work with. It's real easy to um, install. Obviously, I just used a utility knife. There was no dust involved. And uh, everything's nice and 100% waterproof. The client's going to have something that's going to last decades to come. So definitely check out Hydro Block Board. Highly recommend it. And uh, yeah, like, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Okay. I know I repeat myself. I do that all the time for um, separate different videos, short videos, different things that uh, we can use the content for. But uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, so go to, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not necessarily trying to sell this to you, but if you go to a, a find a dealer on hydroblock.com, you'll be able to find that. But definitely uh, check out my course. I have um, a DIY membership that basically incorporates all of my courses put together. Let me show you where that's out here. Got it down at the bottom. So at the bottom, if you go to my, uh, become a DIY Geek member, you get all my courses bundled together. And then I have all these interlinks. So just like you saw, I have a bunch of different ways of going about um, waterproofing. So if you're using Curdy board, I have a tutorial on that. If you're using Go board, I have a tutorial on that. And uh, over time, I just plan to collect all of these uh, different ways of going about things so that I can help you plan, learn, and build your dream bathroom. So thanks so much for everybody joining to me tonight. I hope uh, this has helped you out. Give me a like on the video, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much.